God is with you. Good morning. Good to see everyone. Welcome back to church. Um, wonderful to be here this morning and uh, on this important Sunday, this All Saints Sunday, today where we remember all those who are no longer with us that are on our minds and hearts each and every day. Thank you to uh, Yolanda this morning for being here and uh, being our, uh, leading our music ministry this morning, so thanks very much for being here while Kim is away. It's great to have you here. And welcome back. We haven't seen you in a while. Thank you, Good. Um, so I just want to say, as some of our announcers this morning, just thank you all for the generous donations uh, uh, for our FDA. If you haven't already looked on our uh, website, there's a picture of Tom and Peter and um, and uh, Volker. 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 <laughs> Sorry, Volker. Uh, Volker. Uh, as they as they um, handed over, we raised a thousand and fifteen dollars. Wow! Which is amazing. So congratulations, everyone, for doing that. Uh, Seventy-three kilograms worth of food. So um, that's a in pounds, that's 160 pounds or something like that. That's it. So, uh, and, and thanks very much to you both for bringing it over to uh, our um, Life moves fast. Calendars move fast. And I can't believe that uh, it's almost uh, November 1st, and uh, uh, which means that Advent is creeping up very quickly. And... Uh, um, we will be having our cantata. So starting this Thursday, rehearsals begin. Um, and I saw that it was 8 o'clock. Is that right? Okay. Regular choir at 7 and then, uh, okay. So if you, if you love to sing and uh, would like to join us here to be part of the cantata choir, Please come out Thursday night uh, for 8 o'clock. Well, they can come for a second, right? They can come for at 6.30 and have a coffee first or something. And then we'll sing, and uh, you can warm up your voice, and then we'll, we'll start practicing with the cat at 8. So um, please, please come for that if you uh, would like to. Um, and uh, any other announcements that there are, everything is now posted, as you know, up on the website, and Tammy sends out her... Uh, her email each week, and uh, you can just click on the link, and it should poof, magically open up on your computer. Um, I hope. Um, and then, uh, any other announcements this morning from the community? Yes. Tell us what you said through the microphone. How's that sound? Where did you get mic? Yes. Really? Seriously. <laughs> Today there is a pumpkin auction. That's right. Yeah, after uh, church today, we have a uh, pumpkin and pie auction, and it's going to be uh, a lot of fun. And uh, so I'm looking forward to experiencing this with you this morning. Um, so I've been asked that after church, they do have to do some setup over here. There's some sandwiches, and there's going to be soup and lots of food for us to enjoy as well. Um, but if you could just hang back over on the, this side of the church and, um, and have a chat, and they'll set some things up, and then we will... We'll, uh, we'll ring the lunch bell as well. Okay. Good. Thanks very much. Thank you. Um, celebrations this morning? I know that uh, uh, Kathy was telling me this morning that uh, she just got back from a, a whirlwind trip down in Toronto. And uh, were you in Ottawa as well? Or just no, I just watched them. Just watched in Toronto and so forth. But of course, the family, we know her family, uh, big sports. And, uh, and Kim and Dave are currently away um, uh, visiting Alex, and I'm not quite sure where they are in the... Brown. Brown University. Brown University, okay. And Alex has been doing very well and assisted in a, in a, in a final goal. Tying. Tying. 
the time. time goal. Yeah, so he's doing very well down there. And of course, uh, the granddaughters are doing amazing in their basketball, and they've been advancing up and within one point of, of, of getting to a championship. Well, they were in the championship. They lost it by one point. They lost it by one point, but that's still pretty awesome now, right? I think that's true. So how exciting. Yeah. So uh, give thanks for uh, for them and the fun that they're having too as they, as they advance in their, uh, in their sports world. Oh, nice. <laughs> Three. That was really nice. So Faye just spent a whole week with uh, granddaughters. Yeah, with her granddaughters. It was great. Um, so I'll just do Janine. Hey, I have two announcements. Um, our grandson, Harry, finished second in Nuwasa uh, Junior Cross Country. Um, he was third in the Junior Cross Country. And he's going to be uh, uh, competing in the Junior Cross Country in Nuwasa Junior Cross Country. And he's going to be competing in the Junior Cross Country in Nuwasa Junior Cross Country. And he's going to be competing in the Junior Cross Country in Nuwasa Junior Cross Country. And he's going to be competing in the Junior Cross Country in Nuwasa Junior Cross Country. And he's going to be competing in the Junior Cross Country in Nuwasa Junior Cross Country. And he's going to be competing in the Junior the second thing is I know that many of you know my daughter Stephanie and I just wanted to see her celebrating that she actually uh, recuperated very, very well from her hip replacement and actually her husband brought her out to our place yesterday for coffee. So, oh, nice. good. Good. Nice. Thanks very much. Sean. <laughs> well, I'm celebrating that uh, St. Paul's United Church is welcoming in to the United Church their minister who's Properly known as Reverend Desire because nobody can pronounce his last name. <laughs> myself. But they're celebrating this afternoon where there will be an admissions uh, uh, service for Reverend Desire. And all are welcome to come if you've not had enough to eat here. They're also doing a meal and they're doing that service starting at uh, 1 30. Oh, 1 30. Yeah, good. And as you can see, we have all of these, um, a whole family of pumpkins up here, and, uh, and yeah. I want to celebrate Chloe, who made seven of the pumpkins. Whoa. Whoa. Yay. 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 Chloe. That's awesome. There's nothing like bringing a little bit of paganism into the, uh, <laughs> That's all Martin Luther's fault, you know, the reformer. Yes. He, uh, it was him that brought the Christmas tree into the church. So uh, we get thankful for, I don't know, um, you for coming in and visiting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you like that. Yeah, Andrew has a birthday coming up this week. He's turning 16. 16, yeah. Oh, Happy birthday. I thought I remember when he was born. Yeah, awesome. Jeez. Good. <laughs> so this morning, indeed, we do um, offer um, up our prayers in our, in our hearts for those um, gone before us. So we do have yep. candles here. I'm not quite sure because this is my first All Saints here, but um, I have some votive candles here. Michelle has kindly volunteered to be our candle lighter this morning, so I'll invite her up in a moment. Um, but um, we have we have names in our list of, of members that have been part of uh, this community. And so as we call those names, each one, um, if you um, are part of them, and um, whether a relative or a friend, please come up and light a candle. If not, Faye has uh, also offered to light candles in place uh, as well. And we will also light a candle for all of those, not on the list, that, but that are, that are part of our Westminster family by association by um, in that aspect. So we will do that as well um, this morning. So this time I invite uh, Michelle to come up and, uh, and light our candles. There was a man named Jesus who embodied God's love and compassion in such surprising ways. And he said, And this rainbow candle is lit to show how we, 
as an affirming church, welcome all while offering a safe place to live out each other's spiritual journey. As we begin our worship this morning, we acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land where each of us are gathered today. And we pay our respects to the elders past, present, and emerging, for they hold the memories and the traditions, the culture, and the hopes of all Indigenous people on Turtle Island. God of justice, help us to embody your call to reconciliation with our First Nations tangible, loving ways.
come together on this All Saints Sunday with the names of Westminster United Church's members and family and friends who have died in the past year. Each person's name will be read as we celebrate what the creed calls the communion of saints. And today we celebrate that death does not have the last word as we proclaim life, as we proclaim life eternal in Christ Jesus. This year we light candles in remembrance of those who have come before us, who have changed our lives forever, and who live on in our hearts. Let us give thanks to those names and faces that have impacted and shaped our lives together. So let us pray. God of the ages, we praise you for all your servants who have done justice, loved mercy, and walked humbly with their God. For apostles and martyrs and saints of every time and place who in life and death have witnessed to your truth, we praise you, O God. So at this time, as I call out a name and you are part of their family, please come forward and, and uh, light a candle. Um, and if, if not, we'll have to do that for you. So this morning we remember Betty Jean Kingston. Light a candle too for all of those who are on our hearts and prayers this morning, people that have been part of this community 
part of the family of Westminster that are If you are comfortable and, and hurting, grieving, thinking, you are welcome to come forward and light a candle. Lighting this candle for my oldest brother Dennis, who died in August.
like that candle too to remember the names and faces of those who are not named individually this morning for those victims of natural disasters for those who gave their lives so others may live for those victims of violence around the world including Palestine, Israel and the Ukraine for those individuals not read out, read out aloud today but still in our memories and in our hearts. Lord, we remember those saints who have come before us. We thank you for eternal life and your love and for those saints who surround us today in witness of your kingdom. Amen. This morning, Chloe, are you okay? Do you want to come up and have a chat, or would you be okay if we just went and sang our song? I don't think we have Sunday school this morning because Jamie and Melissa aren't here. Would you like to come up for a few minutes and a minute or so and show me what you're doing and have a little talk? Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you come up and tell me a bit about your pumpkins and let's talk about that. Maybe you can show us, take us on a tour. How's that sound? Yeah, let's do it. except for this one here. What do you think? You like them? They're pretty awesome, eh? Do they have a story behind them? Is there, or, or, like, how did you decide what faces to put on them? with a scar named, oh. and the puppy's name is Stitch. Okay. <laughs> Stitch for that face. You didn't do that, that one. And this one here? Is this like a traditional pumpkin face? No, okay. Um, I tried to make this look like a paw. A paw? Does this look like a paw? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. You did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> And then all these three here. Oh, what's that one there at the end? An owl. This is an owl. Let's go. See the owl in this pumpkin here? Yeah. Really great job. These are all amazing. And this one here. That's fun. For some reason, you made a giant mouse. <laughs> That's what we see the candle inside, right? Whoever. Yeah, we're going to take this Yeah, that's very 
What's your favorite part about making a pumpkin? Carving it? Okay, I, my favorite part is taking the guts out of its head. Yeah. Oh, I did? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Thank you. Oh, this is your favorite too? No, don't say that loud. Uh oh. No. no. Okay, you can't say it out loud. <laughs> Just think about what she's going to say though. Yeah. Oh, these are awesome. So we want to, we all, I'm sure, want to give thanks for the hard work you did on making these pumpkins for today. And it was. Whether you take what is written in the Bible as fact, metaphor, myth, or story, listen to these words for the meaning they hold in your life. May God bless us with wisdom and wonder as we prayerfully consider the meaning of these words in our lives. Our first reading is this morning is from Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 to 17. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne, and they worshiped God, singing, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be, might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes, made them white in the blood of the Lamb. 
For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to the springs of the water of life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our second reading for today is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 1 to 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are per persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. <coughs> Amen. So being at uh, Circle, the Learning Circle this week with the designated lay ministry students at St. Andrews College in Saskatoon allowed me lots of time to focus Again, once again, on my learning, my vocation, my call, remembering the education <coughs> pathway that I chose and the important learning in this community, this community in circle. It was a blessing this time to be there as part of the program team, being a leader and offering my wisdom or some help to the students, and in particular my small group of three students in our peer group. We spent time talking about and learning about things like ecclesiology. Who knows what that is? Oh, well, I'll look it up. Oh, there we go. <laughs> no, that's a, that's a good answer. Ecclesiology actually is to, is to study the purpose and the nature of church. So that's what we did. And under that umbrella comes everything else. Missiology. So the study of our mission. Theology of administration. Yes, there's a theology behind Tammy's work. Theology of self-care. Theology of pastoral care. There is a theology behind everything that we do here together at Westminster. 
It's why we focus on our, our ecclesial life with the Creator and with God as our central focus. One of the things that I have begun to learn to do here, uh, since I've been here at Westminster, is to knit. Never did it in my life. And, uh, and I give thanks to the uh, prayer shawl program for helping do that. And if you notice at the back or when after church you can get up, um, there's a beautiful basket now beside that full of shawls that are used for us, for you, to be able to give out to those that are um, in grief or just sad, need of comfort. This is such a beautiful way to do that. So I spend time in circle, often uh, when our program director was talking to the kids, I got up and I kind of sat down on a comfortable sofa that was behind me while they sat in circle, just to listen. And I knitted. So I've been right, knitting my first prayer shawl myself. So I'm getting there. I figure it'll be ready by 2026. <laughs> this is what I have accomplished so far. Wow. Good. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. So it's been fun to do this. I, I see that there's some holes in it too. So, I don't know. Hopefully that will get fixed. But it's been a blessing and to sit here. How many people here know how to knit? Oh my gosh! We could have that many parasols a week if we if we wanted to. What a what a wonderful thing to do. This is this just knitting has allowed me to <coughs> center my life even more. Allowed me to focus even more and and to pray even more. When I was knitting this during time of circle, I listened attentively to what the what all this. If he wanted to call them kids, and some of the students were like. 15 years older than I was, but listening to them and the, the wisdom that would come out of their, their lives as they learn what it is to be a minister in the United Church, and I would, I would pray, and then I would think about all of you here, and I would pray and give thanks for the blessings that we have together, and uh, <coughs> so if, you, if you're a knitter and don't currently have something on the go, I recommend that you go back to knitting something, because this is really lovely, and if you don't know how to knit, um, don't come to me for instruction, but uh, certainly find someone that, uh, that can help you do it. So thank you for the ministry program, and thank you for Bev, too, for, for um, keeping this going. So this morning, I prayerfully think of the grief that many of uh, you have experienced this past year and even beyond. And as I contemplated this morning's service and prayed over, prayed over it and thought about it, my friend Wayne, an old school friend of mine, came to mind. I, we've known each other since we were about 10 years old. And I thought of his wife, Robin, who died almost three years ago when she suffered a brain aneurysm. And when she had experienced her first stroke, Wayne quickly called me and asked if I could come and visit her in the hospital. And by the time I had got there, she had already been hooked up to life support. And of course, at that time, it was the time of COVID, when the pandemic was in full bloom. And we all know that hospitals and nursing homes were off limits to even the closest of families. But after some wrangling, after some tears, after some frustrating discussions with nursing staff and, and the bureaucracy around the, around the hospital, we were all allowed to finally go in to the hospital room with her. There was Wayne, there was his three sons, and two of his son's girlfriends, and then myself. The sounds of the many monitors told me of her condition. The sadness and grief were quickly evident in each of them as they saw Robin lying on the bed. 
I stood to the side as each of them sobbed, holding tight onto each other's hands, arms, shoulders. And at a nod of Wayne's head, very gentle nod, I soon walked over to Robin, gently anointed her forehead, letting her know that she is a child of God and will soon be at peace. I then held her hand and I asked the family if they would like to surround her, touching her, as I offered a prayer. And as sad and difficult as it was for each of them, there was a sense of strength that held each together as we prayed over Robin. And when I finished, I left the room so that they could each say goodbye to Robin, wife, mother. Because of the pandemic, it took some time for Wayne to have a date set for Robin's burial. But it did finally happen. She had died in February. But the burial happened about three years ago, close to this date, in October. I remember that it was a cool and brisk day. It was actually quite windy. By the time we finally gathered around the spot where her remains would be brought and put into the ground, I asked if anyone wanted to say anything. And at that <coughs> moment, the wind stopped. It allowed each of them to speak and uplift their love and their words for Robin. Wayne spoke last, holding back his sadness, holding back his tears as he talked about his life with Robin. And he ended his lament with, she is now a saint among saints. This morning we celebrate and mourn a day when traditionally the church has remembered all of those who have gone before us and those who have lived Christian lives as well, being a Christian denomination. Loving God and loving neighbor, those who might have struggled with their faith and their wondering of who or what God is as well. Those whose names we've uplifted this morning with these candles. And today we can also celebrate and give thanks for all the living saints that are among us. Those who have touched many hearts with empathy and love and trust. We gave thanks for family and friends, this church family. Those who share their faith with one another and those who share their doubts and those who share their joys. Those who we can think of now who were there when we needed a friend, when we needed a neighbor. Those who we can be so grateful to have in our lives and thanking God for each and every one of them. Today for me, this causes me to stop and give thanks for family, for friends, for those who share with me in my life, sharing my faith or not, sharing my doubts and their doubts, and sharing their joys. And I'm so thankful for God for each and every one of them. And then I come back and I think again of Robin and all others who have become a saint to their family and friends. It's also a time to give thanks for Jesus and the stories, perhaps like stories like the raising of Lazarus from the Gospel of John, 
We didn't hear it this morning. We didn't need to. We know the story. In this story, Jesus was both fully God and fully human. Woven together in a way that we can't fully comprehend. But it is here we see clearly the compassionate humanity of Jesus. Deeply moved and troubled as he witnessed the grief of people that were close to him. And it is not something reserved just for those that Jesus knew during his earthly life. Jesus is deeply moved by the grief that you feel and the grief that you have felt. Our Gospel of Matthew is that beautiful, compassionate, and pastoral words of the Sermon on the Mount. And that second beatitude is, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And if we do mourn, God promises comfort. Just in the case of the first beatitude, this is an Old Testament idea foretold in Isaiah 61, where Isaiah looks forward to the coming of the Anointed One, Christ. Christ would comfort all who would mourn. Isaiah goes on also to talk about restoration, resurrection. Paul also, in his letter to the Romans, described qualities of love. And he did so as he described the character of Jesus and the character that God des desires to see developed in each of us. Paul wrote, Rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn. So grieving husband, wife, mother, father, son, daughter, friend are precious to God. And Jesus is deeply moved by our sense of loss when someone we love dies. And Jesus calls us also to be moved and compassionate to those who are grieving. Jesus entered into the grief surrounding him. And in John, in that story of the raising of Lazarus, we come across one of the most powerful statements in the Bible. It simply says, Jesus wept. It is here that he met Mary and Martha in their grief and wept with them. It is then that the miracle in this story happened. Despite the obvious objections of the family, Jesus asked that the stone be removed from the entrance of Lazarus' grave. And what followed proved to be an amazing, life-changing experience for Mary and Martha and many of the friends and family that had come to surround them at this time of loss. And seeing what Jesus did allowed many to put their faith in him. And he calls out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And he did. And imagine that scene, the gasp, the shock, the wonder, the jaws dropping, the fear perhaps, the amazement, and then joy for all who witnessed this miracle. So it is here in this story that Jesus provided a taste of the future for all believers by raising Lazarus. Primarily on this occasion, so people would believe that Jesus had indeed been sent by God. The message of Jesus was, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me will live, even though they will die. It's through these stories and messages of Christ that continues to bring joyful hope to many of us today. And let us not forget those words from Paul who said to the Romans and says it to us in Scripture, for I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, 
neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is found in Jesus. I was reminded at Circle the last two weeks that all of us are what they call a priesthood of believers, and all are here to care for one another. That is why we work together in our pastoral needs of our community of faith. And yes, I am here to be in pastoral relationship with each of you. This is the covenant that I have with you. We are also called to do the same. Each phone call, each visit, each lunch invitation, each time of listening can be wonderfully healing for those who are grieving. Not that it will end the grief, we know that. But it does bring some comfort to those who really are in need of it. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. I think this morning of Donna, Donna Brown at Roseview and the struggle she's living with right now. But I think of her and how her spirits are lifted when so many of you take time to go visit her. It is so important to keep her knowing that the strong love that comes from this community of faith helps to uplift her spirits. I hear many stories from her and from others of the time you spend with her. So keep doing that. Let her know that she is loved and missed. Just before I end, I want to tell just a little story. It's a little silly, but I thought I'd end it. An aging Irish Catholic priest was driving a devout member of his congregation along a country road one day on their way to a two-day retreat when he accidentally ran over a hare. He stopped the car and the two got out and walked over to where the animal was lying. It wasn't moving. It looked to be dead. But then the priest went back to his car and fetched a bottle from his overnight kit bag that he had in the trunk of his car. And he opened the bottle and sprinkled a few drops of liquid onto this rabbit. It immediately twitched and started coming around. He then sprinkled a few more drops on it and it sat up and it looked around and it hopped away. The priest passenger was amazed. He says, my goodness, Father, he said, that must be powerful holy water that you have with you. Not at all, replied the priest. It was just a common hair restorer. <laughs> So yes, I know, this is a silly joke. <laughs> but it's these stories that help us pause and think about God and sickness and healing and dying, resurrection, and perhaps to put a little smile on our faces, no matter how short that time lasts. So I don't come with any common hair disorder. But like you, I do come with an abundance of faith to share with everyone, along with prayer, along with song, which we hope bring peace, brings peace to all of you and all others who mourn. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>
Let's now get back to God. Let us pray. Tender God, you are our God and we are your people. And we are grateful that you have claimed us as your own. You have set us in the company of saints, past and present, and among those who have made bold witness to your goodness and grace. Your word opens up new futures where we see no way forward. And you know the places in our hearts where we are afraid afraid of a future we cannot control, afraid of losing health and independence, afraid for the well-being of our children, afraid that past mistakes will ruin our future. So write the stories of your people deep in our hearts so that we may learn to trust you beyond our fears. Give us hearts and minds and spirits ready to trust and follow wherever your spirit leads confident that you will not lead us beyond your loving embrace. We ask in Jesus' name, whose outstretched arms welcome us and hold us securely in your grace, God, in your love. Amen. Tender God, we take this time to lift up the people and the places in our world which are in our prayers by first singing verse 2 of Come and Find the Quiet Center.
we continue to pray for all affected by war, the innocent lives taken by war. In particular, we pray for all those who are suffering because of the war in Israel and Gaza, the Ukraine, Ethiopia, South Sudan. We pray for the families of the victims of this week's mass shooting in Lewiston, Maine. God, we know that these types of killings are all too common. Blessed are those who mourn. We pray for all who are sick in hospital, facing life-changing or ending a disease. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for all those who don't have enough to eat or fresh water to drink. Blessed are the poor. In our community, we continue to pray for Donna Brown and John and Sheila Noyes. Esco and Jason and Brent. Give thanks and celebrate that Stephanie is home and Doreen is here with us this morning and Jim. And we ask that you offer them your loving embrace and that they take time to rejuvenate. We have prayers for the Chamut family, the loss of their husband, father, and grandfather last Sunday. For the Walton family, family member in the hospital. For L'Oreal, whose partner was hit by a vehicle while cycling in Arizona. He's in critical condition down there in the hospital. And for the family of uh, Carson Halstead, Carson had passed this week. For Cole, and for Morgan, and for Joyce, who's having surgery, and for Dan, who is having treatment in Toronto. God, in your mercy, into your hands, loving one, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your great love for all creation, through Jesus our brother, who taught us to sing these words. <laughs>
strength, we are God's saints, blessed and beloved of God and sent out, filled with the Spirit to dream dreams and to share the vision of gospel. So as we go forth to live out that calling together, may the blessings of God, the Creator, the love of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. to put it out. If you could just kind of 